Envoys. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we continue with Stephen Goldstein of the Anne Frank Center for Mutual Respect and Mark Potok uh, with the Southern Poverty Law Center. Uh, that what you wrote, Mark, um, the radical right more successful in entering political mainstream last year than in half a century. Explain and explain the findings of your report. Well, even more than half a century. I mean, half a century ago, uh, George Wallace made a run uh, for the presidency in 1968, and it seemed at least imaginable at that point that the radical right would enter the mainstream. But it didn't, of course. Wallace <coughs> lost the election, uh, you know, and things have gone in much the other direction uh, for most of the last 50 years. So, you know, basically what we found in the report uh, was that uh, for the second straight year, uh, the number of hate groups went up, uh, but more important than the actual numbers, which actually are near historic highs in some 30 years of counting that we've done, uh, is the fact that these groups are just electrified by Trump. Uh, they feel uh, that they have a man in the White House. Uh, they feel that they have been given permission uh, to say the things they really believe, that these are legitimate uh, and normalized views. So, really, I think the effect of Donald Trump has been to unleash a kind of Pandora's box uh, of hatreds on our country. And those are not easy things to get back in the box. Uh, you know, the other thing we've, we found, the other really remarkable thing, which you mentioned already, was a near tripling uh, in the number of anti-Muslim hate groups. And I think this is not, you know, 100 percent due to Donald Trump. Uh, certainly part of it is a response to real life. Uh, atrocities from the Islamic State and related kinds of groups, uh, but a huge part of it is due to Trump. Uh, Trump really uh, unleashed this with his comments about Muslims not being good enough to be in our country, uh, with his proposal for a Muslim registry, uh, with his idea of surveilling mosques, uh, and on and on and on. Uh, so that essentially was our finding, that, uh, you know, the radical right has come alive. Uh, as a result of Trump. They have never felt, and in fact never been, in anyone's memory, so close to real power. You know, they're in a position right now to actually have an effect on national policy, uh, a remarkable thing. Deeply moving story out of Missouri, where the Jewish cemetery, uh, perhaps hundreds of tombstones were upended, uh, and a Muslim group uh, went online to raise money to help uh, the uh, Jewish community restore these um, tombstones, and they raised, I think at this point, it's over $50,000 and said they would contribute this not only to help the cemetery, but other uh, people—now oh, over 60,000. It's been going up by leaps and bounds, but to help Jewish groups around the country that are facing assault, Stephen. Amy, that is the real America. And that's what Muslim Americans are like, and that's what Jewish Americans are like, and that's what all other Americans are like. People with essential goodness whom this president should not demonize. People who have greater morals than the president himself has ever had. I wanted to go to some other news. On Tuesday, Milo Yiannopoulos resigned as Breitbart's editor. At a news conference in New York City, a reporter asked him about Trump's chief strategist, Steve Bannon, who was formerly the head of Breitbart. What's your relationship with Steve Bannon? When was the last time you spoke to him? Uh, Steve Bannon brought me into Breitbart. Steve Bannon is one of the most formidable and brilliant political operatives um, of his generation. I have nothing but admiration for the guy. Um, not an easy person to work for if you're a slacker. Uh, not an easy person to work for if you uh, don't show up to work or if you don't really give everything your all. Fortunately, I'm not one of those people. Um, I, I haven't spoken to Steve for a very long time uh, since before he took the job at the White House. Do you credit him as discovering you, though? Do you credit him as, as discovering that you said something to that? Yeah, Steve, Steve Bannon, you know, has populated Breitbart with, uh, you know, a disproportionately Jewish ethnic minority and gay senior editorial team, um, you know, and, and we are, f well, we were, I should say, um, far more diverse than any of the people criticizing Breitbart for alleged racism or God knows what it is this uh, today. That was Milo Yiannopoulos, uh, who has just resigned uh, from Breitbart under um, allegations that he supported pedophilia. Um, Mark Potok, the significance of Breitbart now represented in the White House, although Steve Bannon, of course, has supposedly left Breitbart for the time being. Well, I mean, Steve Bannon is the person that the extreme right feels is their man in the White House, and they are not wrong. Uh, you know, as far as the Milo Yiannopoulos uh, uh, escapade, 
you know, I think it shows that much like Donald Trump himself, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos was a bit of an unexploded grenade. Uh, you know, this was bound to happen. Uh, this is the man who is so, quote, unquote, politically incorrect uh, that he is willing to say things, uh, you know, forget political correctness, uh, that are outrageous and really awful. So, you know, I think that uh, we've seen what happened with Yiannopoulos. He basically uh, imploded. He's lost his book contract. He's lost his work. Uh, and hopefully we won't have to hear too much more about him. You know, unfortunately, that's not the case with Donald Trump. He's the same kind of character, uh, this sort of explosive character. You don't know what's coming next. Uh, you know, and one thing that is certain, though, uh, is that <laughs> Donald Trump is uh, certainly not the uniter-in-chief, as he claims. He's quite the opposite.